sister. So, these events took place more than ten years ago. I was ten-ish, and my little sister was five or so. It all started when my mother befriended a woman named Inna. For context, my mother was, and still is, a very religious person. Inna and her met in church. She was our neighbor and literally lived in a house next to ours. As far as I can remember, they got along pretty fast. I understood soon enough that Inna was in a complicated relationship with her ex-husband. Also, she had a daughter around my age, so both my mother and she had a lot to talk about, and it seemed like they both really needed a friend for a lot of reasons. Looking back, I can't remember when it all started. I didn't like Inna from the very beginning. Yeah, I know how it sounds. Without any reason at all, I didn't like her. I just couldn't relax around her and always felt like something was off. Off, off, off. Nevertheless, my mother continued to take us to her house to spend some time with Ina and her daughter, which I didn't like at all. After, after two months or so, strange things started to happen. At first, Ina just started to come to our apartment unannounced, sometimes late, or even at night. She would call my mother or just knock at our door, interrupting whatever we were doing and asking my mother for some relationship advice, help, or just a vent. It sometimes took hours for her to leave. It was around that time when my parents decided that this had to stop. Even though my mother was sympathetic, she admitted that such kind of behavior is strange. Like, this woman literally came whenever she wanted, stayed despite late hours, and as I now understand, vented really hard almost every time. Sorry, I'm itchy. Okay. So gradually, they talked less and less. My sister and I stopped visiting and my mother even gained the courage to tell her no sometimes. And then something else happened. It was on my way to school, late spring, perfect weather, end of the school year. I was as happy as a ten-year-old kid can be at eight in the morning before school. Shortly after I left, I saw Inna standing by the road like she was waiting for someone. It wasn't strange, after all, she was our neighbor, but wasn't pleasant either. As I generally didn't like her and was a little afraid that she would question me on why we stopped coming, etc., 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 I tried to pass her by as fast as I could, mumbling greetings. To my surprise, she caught up, coming in the same direction as I. Then she said something really unexpected. Did you know that my husband used to beat me? She asked. I was shocked, not by the fact itself. I already heard it from my mother, but by the tone. It was like she asked me about weather or my summer plans. I just nodded. She then proceeded to tell me all of the details of how her husband violated her in more than one way, how he abused her physically, psychologically, and even sexually. Now, I know what you're thinking. Her husband fucked her up and she was traumatized, desperate to find someone to talk to. She couldn't be blamed for it, but for ten-year-old me, it was too brutal and unnecessary. But I felt like I should listen to her, partly because I was far from defending my personal boundaries then, partly because 
because my mother also used to vent to me all the time and I grew up thinking that it's my duty as an older child to listen to adult problems. Anyways, she proceeded for another five minutes or so. I felt horrible and scared. It was extremely uncomfortable. I felt the urge to go away as fast as I could, but I couldn't even open my mouth to tell her to stop. So I just made my legs move and my head nod. Eventually, she finished, said her goodbyes, and went elsewhere without any explanation. I felt confused, guilty, violated, but my mother brushed it off, telling me that Ina is just having a hard time and needs someone to talk to, even if she's a little too much. No, 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 no. I'm sorry if there is a woman going up to my 10-year-old child and telling them detailed information about how they were sexually abused, verbally abused, psychologically abused. Not okay. Boundaries do need to be set. And it should not be brushed off. Just saying. Anyway. Anyway, I forgot about it rather quickly. I had the whole summer ahead, and there was no time to waste on a strange lady. But a strange lady decided differently. Sometime in June, I was watching my sister and playing with friends. We had a relatively safe neighborhood. Our window was on the second floor, just above the playground. So it was okay for my parents to do their own thing while we were playing. So, Mom called me to go upstairs for some reason, and I left my sister outside with an old lady from the apartment above ours, enjoying the sun. When I returned ten minutes later or so, my sister was not there. Apparently, here's what happened. Ina, who was known as my mother's friend by her neighbors at that point, came by and told that old lady that she needed to take my sister somewhere. My sister, being five years old, five years old, sorry, didn't mind as Ina said that she will buy her something sweet along the way. So, as stupid and scary as it sounds, nobody suspected anything and didn't even ask my mother. Honestly, I hope Ina found 
some professional help and I hope I don't know she can get past her demons and you know live a normal life I suppose glad everybody in the story is okay that was a good written story okay so
where we were surrounded by darkness and trees with the river on our right. We were laughing and having a great time. For anyone who is familiar with Niagara Falls, we were walking to the Three Sisters Island and we were, were about halfway there on the sparely lit path. The guy I was with had to pee, so he stayed back a little ways, peeing in the bushes. I was alone, maybe 50 feet ahead on the path under one of the lamps that was on. Then, all of a sudden, and I can't really explain it, but I felt the sensation of a swooshing take over my body, and I was suddenly overcome with the most extreme sense of desperation and hysteria and adrenaline and being terrified with this urge to just run and jump into the Niagara River next to me. I felt like I was having a mental breakdown and losing my mind. So depressed and suicidal and so, so, so desperate for it to end. I was thinking of all the people I loved, but not my loved ones, just anonymous loved ones, if that makes sense. And I felt so fucking sorry that I was leaving them behind. But the fear, adrenaline, desperation, and hysteria is what I felt the most. It's like my mind was on fire with hysteria and depression, and it terrified me. And the desperation to make it end is what was triggering the adrenaline and urge to jump into the water. The worst mental and emotional pain you can imagine. Ugh, I just wish I could describe this better for you guys, but the word that comes to mind aside from hysterical is anguish. I felt the anguish, and that combined with the hysteria and suicidal feelings and intense desperation made my mind feel red hot and like I had to jump into the river that I was running from something terrifying in my own mind and knew the only way out was to end it all. Like, just imagine running into something that is so petrifying and evil that you just become hysterical from the fear and become desperate to kill yourself just to get away from it. That is what I felt. It felt so intense that even after it ended, it still felt terrifying, even though in reality it only lasted about 5 to 10 seconds from the time the swoosh of emotions overtook me to when they finally ended. Then instead of my mind feeling red hot, my whole body suddenly felt ice cold but still felt so much fear. After it ended, I was just frozen with the fear till the light from the lamp above me made this big pop sound and suddenly went out. But when it did, it was like the bulb went out because the two lights next to it didn't turn on. When the light burst, I suddenly felt like I had just run away so I ran to the guy I was with and tried to explain what happened. I told him it felt like I was feeling the exact same emotions and fear as someone who had committed suicide there had felt the moment they did it. That's the only thing I could think of. I was feeling what someone else felt right before they jumped into the river to go over the falls and die. I have my fair share of paranormal spirit encounters. But that was the first and only ghost encounter I ever had. Though instead of seeing the ghost, I simply felt the ghost. It definitely freaked me out to say the least. Then around 6 a.m. we drove back home. Eventually, I went with my mom to Niagara Falls the next year and nothing wild happened as it was during the day. But then 
this weekend, I drove up to Niagara Falls for a third time with my boyfriend and his 12-year-old son. We got there during the day and stayed until nightfall so we could see the falls lit up before heading home. Because of my ghost encounter from our first trip, I tried to take a bunch of photos that night, especially in the area where that encounter happened. I always took more than one picture so I could compare it to others. Upon reviewing the pics after I got home, I saw this strange one that had flying orbs, as I call them, floating down to the ground. The other photos I took of the same spot had no such orbs, and there were no lights in the background that could have caused this. To top it off, I also reviewed pics I took earlier in the day with my boyfriend and his son, and in four or five separate pictures, there appears to be a blue orb floating down the river, further and further in each picture. Definitely strange, like I said. I'm not an orb person. Never believe in them, really. And they could have been caused by the reflection of the water. The daytime orbs were totally different from the nighttime orbs. The daytime orbs were just blue balls of light that could easily be from a flare. But the nighttime orbs were mostly white and had tails behind them that made it look like they had almost been twirling in sync with one another. I will place the picture now. Has anyone else had any crazy experiences from the super haunted Niagara Falls? If so, I'd love to hear about it. Also curious to hear opinions on these orbs as well. Thanks for letting me share. And that is the end of that story. I thought that was pretty well written. I could definitely imagine all of this happening too as I'm reading it. Um, I feel like I've had that happen to me before, not as intense, but where I've gotten like a rush of a crazy emotion out of nowhere that just didn't fit the moment. Um, it's been a long time though since that's happened. That was a very interesting story, and um, if I visit Niagara Falls, which I hope I do, I'm definitely going to be taking a lot of pictures. Okay, so we have one more story. I randomly 
seriously lost their souls at once. I hate this photo. I really do. I hate looking at it and I avoid it as much as possible, which is ironic for this post. The glass door that the face is looking through is frosted and it doesn't reflect anything or show anything from the other side, which had always confused me. Also, the front door is right behind my dad, so it's impossible to fit a full sideways person there. Nobody could ever find a logical approach to this. It sounds cheesy, but my family do have a history of paranormal interactions and stories. But this is the main family ghost story. Okay, are you ready for this picture? One, two, three. Yeah, so that is the picture. I will show the enhanced version as well of the face that they posted. Um, I think it's pretty fucking creepy. If I do say so myself, if I took that picture, I would, I think I would try and do an EVP if I got a face in that picture. What do you guys think? Is it creepy? Does it look like it's been photoshopped? I don't know if you could tell if it's photoshopped or not. Oh god, what was that? Okay, so. That is the end of my creepy story video today. I hope you enjoyed. I am actually going to film a book haul right after this and I'm really excited to talk about these books. I hope that you are doing wonderful. I hope that you have had a wonderful February or having a great March and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.